Yeah, let's ignore them. Is that still going? Yeah, it's rolling. Yeah, Is ignore them. Yeah. Soko, ignore yeah. them as well. Ignore them. Ignore you know, we, you know they take weed anyways. Ignore them. Uh, yeah, okay. So, so the, the main topic was um, to justify and prove the existence of tri Triune God. Over so, against Tawheed. Yeah, yeah, okay, no problem. But anyways, you still believe Tawheed anyways. Tawheed is one God. Not, <laughs> not the Islamic yeah. version. But it's one God. Not, not all versions of oneness are the same. Not even in Islam. No, you don't believe the one God. The Matizali, the Matariri, no, Asari, they don't all believe, believe no, the same thing. No, we believe one I God. I believe in one God. I'm we saying, believe one God. I'm saying belief in one God yes. is not in its meaning the same for everyone that says it. But that's Tawheed, believing in one God anyways. No, it's, it's not Islamic That's Tawheed. the definition. It's not Islamic Okay, Tawheed. anyways, so I want you to answer and tell me, Christians, they say that our God is Triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And here we have Jesus who has two natures, divine nature and man nature. So the man nature has a God. So my question is, who is the, and the God of Jesus the man? So th the mistake is assuming that because Christ is both God and man, that yes. we're here dealing with two persons, Yes. but we're not. You said yes, but that's incorrect. No. As Christians, we believe he's one person with two natures. Okay. Those two natures then relate to the Father in distinct ways. But it's the same person relating to the Father. As to his divine nature, he's absolutely one with the Father. As to his human nature, it is distinct from his divine nature. So it's not that there's a separate person distinct. The, the, the human nature is not a distinct person, it's a distinct nature. Okay, I understand that one. My question was, who is the God of Jesus, the man? You, you keep saying the man as though there's a person. The man has a Jesus. God, the person the, the, Jesus. The human, the human, the human nature, nature of, Christ of, of Christ is that by virtue of which Jesus can refer to the Father as his God. So the, the God of Jesus, the man, the human Jesus. According to, according to Psalm 22, yes. it's the Messiah speaking. It yes. says, you have been my God from my mother's womb. Not from eternity, but from my mother's womb. From the womb, when he assumed a human nature, it was from that point on that he, point. by virtue of that, relates to the Father as God. As to his eternal divine nature, he is and always has been God. Do you know, until now, I'm waiting you to answer my question. Who is the God of Jesus, the human? Yeah, that, I answered that. Who is that? The Father, the, yes? The, the God of... Which one? The, the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit? The Which one? God ah, of, of those three. But, but that's a category mistake. The, you said different persons. Uh, uh, if you're using the term God to denominate the person of the Father, then that's who he's referring to. If you're using the term God to pick out the nature, that's common to the persons. Do you understand basic No, I get what you're saying. No, what I'm saying is you believe three different persons, but as one in essence. So, so there are three persons different who share... Different persons. Are they the same there person? There are three persons who share a common divine nature that we can refer to as deity or godhood. Are they same persons, there those are, three? There are persons that can be referred to in various ways. The Father can specifically be called God. If you're using the term God to refer to the Father, then Jesus can refer to him as his God because he took flesh. No. If you're using the term God to refer to the nature common to the persons, then Jesus isn't referring to that when he says, my God. I will repeat for you. Again. Then I'm just going to repeat the same. You answer. believe you Jesus? Have a different question? No, wait, wait. You believe Jesus, the human, has a God, and your God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are different persons, different persons. So these three different persons, which one is the God of Jesus, the flesh? So, back to the category distinctions that you ignored, but were already supplied for you. The term God in Scripture is used in more than one way. Just like the word man can be used in more than one way. Think of the term Adam in the Bible. Adam is the name on the one hand for the race. On the other hand, it's used for the first man. So if I say to you, did man, are you the son of a man? And if I say, are you the son of man, are those the same questions? But you know my question doesn't apply okay, to Okay, so this. you don't understand. 
So you, you said three wanna, different persons. Who is the God of Jesus out of these three? If you don't understand you my answer, it? you might want to move on to a different Look, question. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Who is your God? Your God. I'll repeat for him easily. Here, 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 let, you, your you've God. Asked me a question. No, no. Your you've God. Asked me a question. Now let me say something. The, the real question here, the fundamental question is, what did Jesus say? After that, after that, people can ask who have submitted to him, how do I understand this? How do I work through this intellectually? Because at the end of the day, the fundamental issue is whether or not we are in submission to God. Jesus said very clearly that God is Father, Son, and Spirit. In Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said, baptize them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the question. Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe whatsoever things I've commanded He's not you. Answering my Lo, question. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Here, Jesus significantly refers to Father, Son, and Spirit as fundamentally one by virtue of saying, baptize them into the name, ta anama in Greek, it's singular, baptize them into the name, one name Hallelujah. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So one name, but three recurring articles, signifying the unity of essence and the distinction in personhood. The Christian God is triune and always has but been. But I'm not asking you if the Christian that, God is triune the God or not. God is superior. Can you, can you listen, but I please? Finish. The Christian God is superior to the Islamic him? Time deity, for him. Time for him. who is incapable go of. Time for him. Okay, go ahead. I'll, I'll let you go. Okay. Until now, you're telling me the triune God. But what I'm asking uh, you is not the triune Jesus, God. What, now, what I ask you, you, let me finish. But he, but he needs to be accurate. Let me finish. Until please. now, Jesus said, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, no, what is your until now, what I'm, ask, what I'm asking you, you is. You asked me a question, what? I answered you. No, no, no. no, no, no. He didn't answer my question. No, no, no. He doesn't get to He's avoid. explaining the triune God, and I'm asking who the God of Jesus is. But here's the problem. See the difference. Here's the problem. He's trying to escape. He asked me a question. Okay, okay. Finish, I don't need to speak while well, you're interrupting. Okay, what was he my question? He asked me a question. I answered it three times. Okay. Then I made wait, wait, a point, wait. and now he, along with all of you, got wait, 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 distracted. Wait, wait, wait. Because, That's you know, I'm not asking him, triune God. I'm asking who the God of Jesus is. But he's not answering. Who is the God of Jesus? Here is my statement that he needs to deal with. Jesus said, baptize them into the singular name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. What is your response That's to right. Jesus? I'm what repeating. What is your response to Jesus? Wait, wait, wait. To Jesus. Let him talk. Wait, if, wait, he's, wait. if he's afraid to respond to Jesus, this wait, will be wait, the wait. first definitive point against his position. So now, yes, my question to he's him... He's head no, but this is fundamentally no, true. Friend, you spoken. Fundamentally true. You spoken. If you can't deal with the Can argument, you time for us? then sit down. Two minutes, yeah, two minutes. Time for me, two if minutes, then two minutes. If he doesn't answer, minutes. he's dodging. Two minutes. So you're not, you're two right? minutes, yeah. I will answer his point, and I, I want him to answer my question. You're you're hoping okay, hoping two minutes, yeah. Two minutes, yeah. Two minutes, yeah. Yes. Okay, it doesn't matter. These guys can't so, debate. So you. now, you, you go ahead. Can, you, he go did ahead. not answer my question until I now. I answered it three I, times. Uh, this is my time. This is my time. Let him lie. That's it's what you're my saying. Time. Let him lie. You will speak two minutes. Let him lie. I'll speak two All minutes. All the speak two want minutes. him to lie. Can you tell him to? Okay, lie for two minutes. Let me speak. Go ahead. Okay, Saraj. give him two minutes. Okay, time, yeah? yeah two ahead. minutes, two minutes, yeah? Okay. Ask the same question. So now, I'll repeat again for him. I ask him. Jesus had two natures. He said, God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three different persons. These three different persons, one of them is the God of Jesus. Only who? The Father. If these three are one God, these three should be the Father and the God of Jesus, the flesh. So the God of Jesus, the flesh, should be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the Father and the God of Jesus is only the Father and the Father. The God of Jesus, the flesh, is only the Father. So not the Son, not the Holy Spirit. But the God of Christians is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the God of Christians is three in one, triune God. But the God of Jesus, the flesh, is not three. It's just one, the Father. 
So now well, my question to him was, who is the God of Jesus? Because Jesus told us in the Bible, according to them, the Gospel of John chapter 20, verse 17. I am going to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. According to this verse, Jesus the flesh, according to them, the flesh has a God. So who is the God of Jesus out of these three persons in one? Is it the Father? Is it the Son? Is it the Holy Spirit? If it's only the Father, why the God of G Christians is different than the God of Jesus the flesh? You Did you hear? Yes. Okay. Now, now observe, I've got two minutes now uninterrupted. That's what we agreed to. Two minutes. Two minutes. Observe two things. Number one, he repeated his question, even though I've already answered it three times. This will now make four times. Four times. This does not speak well for the intellect of anybody who would argue in this fashion. He's not an intellectual uh, person. But, but notice also, I made a point from the Lord Jesus that he entirely avoided. He entirely avoided the Lord Jesus. This man is not a man who submits to the revelation of God. So, what is my answer for the fourth time to his question? The term God can be used in more than one way and is in the scriptures sometimes the term God is being used as a personal designator for the Father sometimes it's being used qualitatively to talk about what the Father or the Son or the Spirit are just like the term man or Adam can be used to refer to a particular man and can also be re used to refer to the nature of all of his descendants. So terms can be used in distinct ways. This man's whole argument turns on a failure to understand something as basic as this. When God is referred to as Jesus God, it's referring to the person of the Father, not to the common divine nature that all three of them share. Now, I've answered his question for the fourth time. Even if he doesn't get the answer, I hope you do. I think but now one knows. thing, one thing that you'll have to do is hold his feet to the fire to not only repeat his question again for the fifth time as if to prove to the hilt the fundamental irrationality of the anti-Trinitarian position, but also deal with what Jesus said. What did Jesus say? Baptize them into the name, singular, singular. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That's, right. that's the God of Jesus. That's the God Jesus proclaimed. Jesus, the that's that's the God that Jesus proclaimed. Okay. That's the God that, that said on. Okay. No, no, we finished. Okay. So now, until now, he didn't answer. I asked him simple question. If you ask me, who is my God? My God is Allah. If I ask him who is his God, he would say, Yo the way. Father, the Son, and Yo the Holy way. Spirit. And these three are different persons. So my question to him was, who is the God of Jesus, the flesh? Is it the Father? Is it the Son? Is it the Holy Spirit? Or is it all? Is it all of them? Is it not? It's not all of them. He knows that. So the fa the God of Jesus, the Father of Jesus, is only who? The Father, not the Son, not the Holy Spirit. If these three are God, yeah, one in essence, one God, then why the God of Jesus is not the Holy Spirit? Why the God of Jesus, the flesh, is not Jesus, the divine nature? But Christian God is the Holy Spirit, the Son, the divine nature, and the Father. Three persons in one. But here, the God of Jesus is only one. The God of Muslims is one, not three persons in one. But here, Christians say always, Muslims are wrong. Why? Because our God is not triune God. But Jesus of the Bible, according to them, that his God is not triune God. It's not three persons in one. Otherwise, you have to tell me, Jesus is the flesh. The God of Jesus, the flesh, is Jesus, the divine nature. But he's not. The God of Jesus, the flesh, is not the Holy Spirit. But why do they have different God than the God of Jesus, the flesh? Now again, Jesus, who is the God, who is the father of Jesus? Out of these three. Since Jesus is son of God, son of who? The father is God, the son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. All these three are one God. Since these three are one God, in essence, all these three should be the father of Jesus, the flesh. But only one of them is the father of Jesus, the flesh. Then that means the flesh is not the son, the father. I mean, Jesus, the son, Jesus, the divine is not God. 
the Holy Spirit no, is not God. I'm, I'm looking at the okay. time. You answer. In, in baseball, after three strikes, a person is You're out. out. Yeah. Siraj is now has struck out after five strikes. He's not content with three. He wants to utterly and abysmally fail. And he wants to make it painfully obvious to all of you that he can't handle an answer of a simple pitch thrown straight down the middle. I told him the answer to this, and it's very easy. <coughs> Terms have different meanings depending on their context. The term man has different meanings depending on the referent of the term. This is basic linguistics. Nobody should be wagging their head, smiling, chuckling as though this isn't easy. This should be basic, basic. Man can be used to refer to a particular person, namely Adam, or it can be used to refer to the race. If you don't understand this distinction, you'll make fundamentally basic errors, as Siraj has done repeatedly, with the use of the term God. The term God can be used to refer to the first person of the Trinity as a personal designator, just like Adam can be used to refer to Adam the first man, and the term God can also be used to refer to a common nature, such as that possessed in the case of deity by Father, Son, and Spirit, and as is possessed by all the descendants of Adam. All of us are man, mankind, men. This is the whole equivocation that his argument turns on. It's not rational. It, sh it shouldn't be difficult. It shouldn't be used to repeat and generate four or five different arguments based on the same fundamental error. But notice again, notice again, not only did he repeat his question that I answered for the fifth time, he still didn't answer Jesus. Why does this man who claims to submit to the revelation of God not submit to the revelation of God given through Jesus? Jesus said, baptize them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. One name, three persons. That's the God revealed through Jesus. Okay. That's the God revealed through That's Jesus. It. That's the God he's okay. running from. Okay, again now. If you repeat your question again, okay. I'm done. Okay. If you repeat your question no, again, I'm going to, to I'm refute, not going to waste I'm going my to time. refute what you said. Go ahead. I'm going to refute what he Go said, ahead. yeah? I'm just so letting first you have fair warning. My you second question. Address no. me or yes, I will refute your Moving point. I'll refute your point okay. and I will say that you did not respond to my question, yes? Yet. So now I'm going to refute baptize, go to all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's not the verse. This that's what you said. Repeat it again. You said baptize them into the name right. of the Father okay. and the Son. I'm the Holy okay. Spirit. Okay, okay. this verse does not prove triune God. Do you know why? Because he used the and. And means what? If I say Siraj and him, are we one? Are we one? Siraj, him, and Sam. Does that mean we are one and? And means what? There's, a, there's an issue there. There's, there's sentence is still on. So, okay. Was Jesus baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? The answer is no. If they are under, in, baptized them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit would indicate the triune God, then the God of Jesus should be also Jesus, the divine nature. The God of Jesus also should be the Holy Spirit. But here, the God of Jesus, Jesus, the flesh, has a father. Who is his father? God. So since the God of Jesus, the flesh is the, and the Father of Jesus, the flesh is God, and this and, and the God is who, and that God is who, three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All these three are one, one, one God. If since they are one God, why only one of them is this Father and the God of Jesus? That means that verse does not indicate triune God. Simple. Okay. So as I said, he repeats himself. He's been refuted. He I did it a sixth time. But the only thing different this time, besides repeating the equivocation between the term God used as a proper noun for the Father or as a qualitative designator for the nature of the person, he did at least try to answer the statement of Jesus in Matthew 28, 19. However, he spectacularly failed. He said this verse refutes the Trinity because it says, and the Son 
and the Holy Spirit, as though that isn't the Trinity. Christians believe that the Son is a distinct person from the Father. How do you express that? And the Son. Christians believe the Spirit is a distinct person from the Son. How do you express that? And the Spirit. Christians believe Father, Son, and Spirit are one God. How do you express that? Into the name of. One name. One name, three conjunctions, three recurring articles, three personal designations. Baptize them into the name, one name, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So, here's the count. Six times he repeated the same fallacious argument that I completely responded to, and there's just no hope of recovery from that. Only this last round did he try to deal with Matthew 28, 19, but that too was a spectacular failure. Jesus clearly taught the doctrine of the Trinity, as did all the prophets. Muhammad was not in agreement with those who came before him. He was the odd man out. Muhammad came and contradicted the teaching of Abraham, of Moses, of David, of Jesus, of all the prophets. I'll, I'll conclude. Okay. So yeah. now he said, Prophet Muhammad opposed all prophets of the Bible. Amen. Guess what? Christians are the ones On who opposed issue. the prophets of the Bible. Why? The God of Moses is not triune God. Yes. The God of Abraham is not triune God. Yes. Why? The answer, the proof is here. Moses did not worship the Son. Moses did not worship the Holy Spirit. And they did not teach the triune God. Christians, we know who understands better the, the Bible, the verses, the Amen. scriptures. Amen. We know who understands the prophets, not the Christians. If we say Christians are the correct way and the prophets are wrong, then that means Christians are the way and Jesus is not the way. Why? Because the God of Jesus, the flesh, is not three persons in one. Jesus did not worship the Son and the Holy Spirit. The God of Jesus is not three in one. The, the Father of Jesus is not three in one. It's only one. The God of Moses is only one. So now, Matthew chapter 20, uh, 28, verse 19, even is edited. Do you know why? Because before the crucifixion, that verse is and after the resurrection, yeah? Before the crucifixion, Jesus said, from now on, from now on, we know what does that mean, yeah? When they captured him, the enemies captured him. Do you know what he said to them? From now on, you will see the Son of, the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God, not at the right hand of the Father, God. The term God the Father, Jesus never used that name. He, only, he either uses God or the Father. But Christians edited the term God the Father. There's nothing like that. Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 26, verse 64, he said, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God. And this Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, is after the resurrection. In order Jesus to say that, he was already in heaven. Who said that? Unknown authors, from unknown disciples. No eyewitness. Okay, no, no. So, number one. He made a series of assertions about what the prophets taught. But understand, assertions are not arguments. Assertions require premises that are either true or false and that are supportive of the conclusion. Assertions are not factual premises. So, his entire claim there is just that, a claim, not an argument. He did not prove that Moses contradicted or did not teach the Trinity or that Abraham or any of the other prophets followed suit. Number two, he claims that Matthew 28, 19 is a forgery because Jesus said he'd be seated at the right hand of God. But how, pray tell, do those two statements contradict each other and prove that one must be an, inter, an interpolation? It doesn't. The Son is not the Father. The Son is distinct from the Father, not as to his divine nature or essence, but as to his personhood. So, one text talking about the Son being with the Father, doing things together with the Father, alongside and so forth, that doesn't refute the Christian doctrine of the Trinity or Matthew 28, 19, which is fully supportive of it. But again, my friend goes back to the same bogus, equivocal argument that if Jesus refers to the Father as God, therefore, he's affirming that somehow God isn't also the Son and the Spirit. But I've already explained the term God can be used as a personal designator and qualitatively. This is simply a fact of grammar as well as just linguistics. 
In John 1, 1, for example, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. There it uses the phrase, proston theon. It's definite in Greek, but the third clause says, and the Word was God. There, it's a pre-verbal predicate nominative, meaning that the word God is being used qualitatively. It's saying that the word by nature is what the Father is, but not who the Father is. So every time this person says, Jesus is not the Father, Jesus is seated next to the Father, Jesus referred to the Father, he's not refuting Christianity. He's articulating part of it and then ignoring the other part, which says that these three persons are all by nature God. That's the teaching of the whole Bible. That's the teaching of Jesus. That's okay. why this text is a nightmare for Islam. Okay, now it's my turn. Okay. Wait, we lost now, our timers. Okay. Can you time for us, please? You finished. He said he finished. So you yeah. time for me, yeah? Let's go one more round. Yeah. No, I'm going still. No, no, I'm saying let's go. Let's go one more round. Yeah. Okay. I'm tired. Okay. And I want to talk to Mansoor too. Okay, okay. You like Mansoor? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now again, I, I, I'm not here all, all okay, the time. Okay, no problem. He's still proving me whether Jesus is God or not. But I'm, I'm proving that triune God doesn't exist. So I didn't ask him to, and about and triune God or whether Jesus is God or the Holy Spirit is God. I was proving that there's nothing called triune God. As I said, I'm not repeating that one anyways. So now he jumped to John 1.1. 1, 1. I like this verse. This verse is easy to destroy. Even that verse was, is quoted from Hindu scripture. Do you know what Hindu scripture says? In the beginning, there was Prachapati, Brahman, whom, who was the word. And the word was verily, the word was Brahman. So there was a word in the beginning, according to Hindu scriptures. The book of, the book of um, and Krishna and Yajurveda and, some, and Kathaka Samhita, chapter 12, verse 5, chapter 27 verse 1, chapter 42 verse 1. Same thing, in the beginning there was a word, it's from there. Even I and Father is deprived from Hindu scripture, we know that one. Anyways, it says in the beginning there was a word. First of all, God has no beginning. So in the beginning is destroyed. Guess what, who is speaking in the beginning? John is speaking, a known author. We don't even know anyone who saw John. We, we, have, we don't have any eyewitness that has seen John when he was writing. We are not sure yet. Okay, so now in the beginning there was a word, the word was with God and the word was God. John is speaking. The word, Jesus himself, in John chapter 5, 8 verse 55, Jesus said, I obeyed the word of God. John himself, the word of God came to him. Jesus that time existed in the flesh. And they said before the flesh, Jesus was the word. And who came to John? The flesh, the word of God came to John. If the word of God came to John and Jesus existed in the flesh, which means Jesus is not the word. Why? Because the word already ex Jesus already existed and the word came to John. And also the Gospel of jo Luke, chapter, uh, the Gospel of John chapter 5, 8 verse 55, Jesus obeyed the word of God. How can Jesus be the word of God when he himself obeyed the word of God? Okay. Siraj said that John 1.1 1, 1 is easy to answer then why did he fail so badly? When John 1, 1 says, in the beginning, en arche, en halagos, he said, this can't be about God because God has no beginning. But that's what the verse is saying. It doesn't say, in the beginning, God came into being. It says, in the beginning was the word. It uses the imperfect tense. In the beginning, en arche, en halagos. It means the word already was. Not that he came into being. First mistake of Siraj on this easy verse. Secondly, Siraj says this comes from the Hebrew Scriptures. Siraj is supposed to be a Muslim who follows all the prophets but apparently is ignorant of the Old Testament and of Moses. Moses said in the beginning, Barashit bara Elohim. That's from Moses, not from these pagan Hindu Scriptures which seem to have greater appeal to him than the writings of Moses. Why do you know what the Vedic scriptures say and not what Moses said? You're supposed to be a Muslim. Thirdly, you said this is John talking and it says that the word came to Jesus. Here again you're engaging in colossal equivocation. Terms do not always have the same meaning. They change meaning depending on the context. 
a word can be referred to a sound that comes forth from the mouth, but it's obvious that that's not how the term word is being used for Jesus in John 1, when it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, proston theon, it uses a construction that indicates intimate fellowship or relationship. That's not how you talk about a fleeting word that proceeds out of a person's mouth and then ceases to exist. That's how you talk about a person. That's why John went on to say, this one was in the beginning with God. He uses a masculine demonstrative pronoun. You finish he, your time. He was in the beginning with God. So, Soraj is out again three times. Okay. You're finished. You're finished. Okay. <laughs> so, so now again, You're he finished. said in the beginning. He used Moses to justify John 1-1 here. Yeah? Watch out. Moses never said in the beginning there was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Listen here. And who is speaking? John is speaking. Jesus, I, I challenge any Christian to show me where Jesus claimed to be the word of God. John is speaking. Here's a Christian. Wait, wait, let me... <laughs> John 1-1, one, one, there's two John there speaking. So John 1-1, one, one, it's not Jesus claimed to that. But John himself told us Jesus obeyed the word of... Jesus claimed that he obeyed the word of God, which is in John chapter 8, verse 55. And now, in the beginning there was a word, it goes against Genesis 1-1. One, one. Because Genesis 1-1, one, one, it says, in the beginning... God created heaven and earth. There was no word. This word was never introduced by Moses, by Isaiah, by Jesus. By who? By John, anonymous. Who saw John when he was writing the Gospels? We, we have no sure. Because that book, we cannot rely even. Why? Because Christians themselves, they disagree what's written in John. Example, 1 John 5, 7. Not all Christians believe that. John 1 John 5, 7, it says, in New International Version, in English Standard Version, it says there are three that bear witness. The verse ends. But in King James Version, John 1, John 5, 7, it says in the beginning, there are three that bear witness. Who are they? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. But how come, same book, same verse, but each Christian sect, they're using different verse different translation so if all of them got inspired why Christians majority of the Trinitarians disagree King James 1 John 5 7 okay. so that means we cannot even rely on that book okay. number one I made no appeal to 1st John 5 7 it was him appealing to it so it's quite irrelevant to say some people appeal to this some of that who cares if he appeals to it and I don't that doesn't show that I'm in conflict with myself the earliest Christian manuscripts don't have it. No Christian has used that historically to prove the Trinity until very later time. But the more important issue is your claim that John is somehow not in concert with Genesis 1. Because John says in the beginning was the word. Moses does not mention the word, allegedly. However, there are several factors here to be considered. First of all, notice that the God of the Bible from the very beginning is already portrayed as a speaking God. Let there be lights, let the earth bring forth. Who is God speaking to? Who is he speaking to? That's number one. When you get to verse 26, God says, let us make man in our image. Who is God speaking to? Number three, as you move through the writings of Moses, it's clear that Moses believes that the word is a title for a divine person. For example, in Genesis 3, it says they heard the voice of God walking. Notice it doesn't say they heard a voice. It says they heard a voice walking. The subject doing the walking is the voice, the call Yehovah Elohim. Later in Genesis, it says the word of the Lord appeared to Abraham. Genesis 15. The word appeared. The word appeared to him. He saw the word. This is the testimony of John. We beheld the word. John 1.14, we beheld him. This was the testimony of Moses in Genesis. This is why John spoke this way. He was a Jew. He believed Moses. My opponent doesn't believe Moses. Finished. He's more interested in the Vedic scriptures. And I'm done, okay. my friend. I'll let okay, you have the last word. Okay. So now he's using again Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. 
where it says the word of God came to Abraham. He's trying to use John 1, 1 and this one to link together, but that's not how it is. Guess what? If we say Jesus is the word, yeah, before the flesh, and the word came what? Flesh, yes? So, but here we have in the Gospel of Luke chapter 3, verse 2, John, do you know who came to John? The word of God. That time, John, who, uh, the word of God came to him, already Jesus, the flesh, existed. So if we say the word of God here in Genesis is Jesus, but here, the Gospel of Luke chapter 3, verse 2, John, Jesus, the flesh, already existed. So if Jesus already existed, who is this word who came to John? The word of God. So and Jesus already existed. That means the word of God is not Jesus. Jesus himself obeyed the word of God. So now, again, what I'm saying is, he said, God said, let us make man in our image, yes? He's asking me, who is God talking to? Number one, there's no clear evidence. There's no evidence which says God was talking to Jesus. He can't show me. If that's the case, let's say for the sake of argument, that's Jesus. Did Moses tell us? Who understands the Bible? Christians or the Bible or the prophets? Why did God send the prophets? To, go, to guide people, to show us the way. Through inspiration, through and God, and message, and God's message. So now, in the Quran, chapter 2, verse 30, God is telling us he was speaking to angels. If you ask me, can angel create uh, mankind or whatever? Remember, the Bible, the Bible says in the, in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 6, and 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 4, it says God assigned the angels his authority to the angels. They do the authority of God. So here God let us make man in our image. In the Quran, God was speaking to the angels in chapter Quran chapter 2 verse 30. He said, remember when your Lord said to the angels, I am going to create mankind. That's not Jesus. If it's Jesus, then the prophets understood wrong. The Christians are correct. Better than, they understand better than the prophets of God. So Christian prophets are wrong. Christians are correct. you are finished. Thank you, Siraj. Okay. Good conversation. Are you done? Yes. Okay. Finished. Yes, we finished. So do you believe finished. 1 John 5, 7? No, 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 it's not even in the ancient manuscripts. You, you don't believe that one? It's not in the manuscript, but the statement's true. It's just question. not in the manuscript. Okay, wait, 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 wait. He no, said no, no, it's no. not in the... Wait, wait, brother, one question he said. Wait, wait, he said one question. He said 1 John 5, 7, it's not in the manuscript, but the statement is correct. So now, how can he rely on uh, this a book which he does not believe no, 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 no. all of no, no, it? No. That's not part of the book. You just said, okay, how can you rely then, John? If you, why are you quoting then a that book was, you which you believe John is corrupted? Which my, my, no, anyways, my anyways. position is on the basis anyways, of the Anyways, now look, he's using John my and he doesn't believe all of its all, it's all verses. Now, shame. Shame. Imagine shame. This man doesn't He rejected 1 evidence. John 5 7. And he's using John, one, uh, the book of John. Come on. So now, Christians, Jesus is son, the flesh is son of God. And God is three different persons, but one in essence. That God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the God of Jesus is not three of them, only one of them. These two are not the God of Jesus, the Son and the Holy Spirit, only the Father. So if God is three in one, these three are God, in one God, then these three, all of them should be the God of who? Jesus, the flesh. And the Father of Jesus should be all of them. But Jesus, he was antichrist. Why? Because he did not worship the triune God. He only worshiped the Father, not the Son, not the Holy Spirit. So what are you talking about? Jesus, even now, he has a God. That's why he said, I'm going to my God and your God. So Jesus now, Paul said in the book of Romans, chapter, uh, Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8, Jesus, Paul said Jesus today, yesterday and tomorrow is the same. So Jesus is a man, God is not a man. Hosea chapter 11 verse 9, Jesus said I'm a man. The gospel of John chapter 8 verse 44, Jesus is a man sitting next to his God according to them. So if he is sitting next to his God and he said I'm going to my God, Jesus then he's not God, he's still a man. He's not, uh, Jesus, according to them, Jesus, according to them, Jesus claimed divinity at the age of 30. So why not before the age of 30? The Gospel of Luke chapter 3, verse 23. No, 
Jesus of the Bible, according to them, he claimed divinity at the age of 30. So who was Jesus before the age of 30 then? So who are we going to blame? The people died before Jesus started his ministry. Are they going to hell? Because they died as antichrist. They died as non-Christian faith. So who are we going to blame? They all the time say, all the time they say, Jesus is the way and the truth. Guess what? He's not the way. If he's the way, the God of Jesus, they should follow Jesus, not themselves. Jesus worshiped the Father, not the Son and the Holy Spirit. According to the Bible, Christians are false worshippers. The Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 21 to 22, Jesus said that we worship what we know. He included himself and his disciples, that they all worship the Father, not the Son, not the Holy Spirit. And he said the true worshippers will worship the Father. So Christians are false worshippers. So if Jesus is the way, they should follow Jesus' way. And guess what? Jesus, even according to the Bible, is not the way. They said Jesus is the way. Prophets are not the way. Okay, who was the way before Jesus was born? Who was the way before Jesus started his ministry? Okay, Jesus ignored Gentiles. The Gentiles and Samaritans who died before Jesus said, go to all nations. And they died without believing in Christianity. Who are we going to blame? Who was the way for them? Jesus ignored them. Again, when Jesus was alive, he ignored people. Why? He used parables. Why? Because he never wanted them to return to God so God could forgive their sins. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verse 11 to 12, 13. So Jesus ignored them. He used parables. And he was asked, why did you use? He even said, he said, because he never wanted them to return to God. So God could forgive them. So if you are the way, why, why would you use parables? Why do you say, I don't, uh, because I never wanted them to return to God. So you're not the way. And again, what? After Jesus ascended to the heaven, he's not the way. He said, the comforter will come and guide you, into, shall guide you into all the truth. If Jesus guided them already, why he needed another comforter, comforter to come and guide them? The Gospel of John chapter 16, verse 13. The Gospel of John chapter 16, verse 7. The Comforter, they said, is the Holy Spirit. It's not the Holy Spirit. Because the Comforter was already there before with the time of Jesus. So anyways, that's not the Holy Spirit. Because the condition, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter to come is what? Jesus to come, to go, and then the Holy Spirit will come. I mean the Comforter, not the Holy Spirit, sorry. The Comforter will come when? When Jesus goes. The condition is what? After Jesus ascended. So the Holy Spirit cannot be Jesus and the Comforter. Why? Because the Comforter was already existed. He was there with Jesus. And Jesus said, the Comforter shall not come unless I go. Can the Comforter come when Jesus is there? No. The Holy Spirit was already there with Jesus. Example. The Gospel of Luke chapter 24 verse 49. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good. Finished. I was not